let's talk about Live Photos. Live Photos is a really interesting iPhone camera feature that essentially captures the short video even before you press the shutter and also shortly after you press the shutter so that every time you capture a still image, you also get a short three second video complete with motion and sound. I think Live Photos is a great technique for you to not only capture still images, but to also get some of the surrounding context around that moment. And oftentimes, if you're taking photos in family setting or if you're shooting other people or whenever there's some kind of motion in the scene, that extra three second video can be really, really useful. It can be a great technique to help you preserve your most precious memories. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to work with live photos, how to make sure you get the best live photos possible, and also what you can do with those live photos after they're already captured. Well, let's get started. Okay, I've framed up the shot, but before I press the shutter, I wanna make sure I have the live photos feature enabled. So at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you'll see those three concentric circles. That icon is the live photos icon. If I tap my finger there, you'll see that it's now crossed out and on the top of the screen it said live off. That means live photos are turned off. So I'm not gonna get a live photo now. If I tap this icon again, it becomes white and now live photos are once again turned on. Okay, so now that I have live photos enabled, look at what happens as I press the shutter. You'll see the word live appeared on top of the screen for about one and a half seconds after I press the shutter. Let me show you that again. As I press the shutter, the word live appears on the top of the screen. So what's happening behind the scenes is that while that live word is showing there, the video for a live photo is still being recorded. But more than that, the video was also being recorded continuously the whole time while the camera was open before I even pressed the shutter. And then when I do press the shutter, what I get is a three second video showing a moment before I press the shutter and a moment afterwards. And because of that, when I'm capturing live photos, it's really important that I keep my iPhone as steady as possible. But now let's talk about that framing. So you'll see that my daughter is playing in the sand and while that looks really nice, there are some problems with the shot. One is that we have all these people around and I'm trying to frame up the shot in such a way where we have as few other people in the shot as possible because I don't want a distracting shot. I want a simple shot. The same goes for her toys. She likes playing with those beach toys, but I don't want too many in the frame. In fact, the fewer the better because I'm looking for the cleanest shot possible. So I'm gonna frame this up carefully. I'm gonna try to not move the phone at all. And now that the phone is steady, I'm gonna gently press the shutter and you'll see that the live photo was recorded. Now, I did capture a live photo, but I don't think I got what I needed because my daughter was just minding her own business. She's here playing in the sand, she's busy, but that's not really working for my photos because what's happening here is that we have this direct sun and it's pretty much over my shoulder. So what that means is that as long as my daughter is looking down, her entire face is in the shadow. And that is a big shadow that just makes her entire face dark and it doesn't look so good in photos. So if I wanna get the best shot possible, I'll need to somehow attract her attention. So once again, I'm gonna frame this up carefully and I'll see if I can somehow get her attention. Emily. Hey, Emily. Look at daddy, hey, I'm taking a photo. Now I got her attention initially, but I don't think it was quite enough. And I think pretty soon she figured out what I was up to that it wasn't important, at least not to her, and she's now busy playing again. So what can I do? One option is to just sit here and wait, and sooner or later she will raise her head again, and that would be a great photo opportunity. Or I could also get mommy to help out, so mommy's gonna stand right behind me, and if she tries speaking to my daughter, then hopefully she'll be looking at mommy, which will also be exactly where I'm standing with the camera, and then I can get some great shots. Now look at that. That is exactly what I need. She's looking up. So make sure I capture multiple live photos. I never know which one's gonna work out exactly right. So 
it's better to be safe than sorry. You notice how I've simplified the shot. There aren't many distractions in the frame, just my daughter on the beach. I'll keep reframing, and as she's looking up, you'll see that her face is now no longer in the shadow. Okay, I think I definitely got the shot. So let's open up the Photos app and let's see what we just captured. All right, I'm now inside the Photos app and here we have the live photos we just captured. And if you look at the top left-hand corner of the frame, you'll see the word live there. That means that this is a live photo. Now, look what happens as I scroll through the photos. So I'm gonna to scroll to the next image to the right. Did you see that? Just as I was scrolling through the photos, there was some movement. So I could literally see a short preview of the live photo just as I was scrolling through the photos app. Let me show that to you again. I'm gonna to scroll to the right. And once again, I could see my daughter clapping her hands just as the photo was scrolling through. But now, let me show you how to play back a live photo. So if I wanna watch the video that I've captured, all I have to do is tap and hold my finger on the screen and the video starts playing. But here's something interesting. You'll notice that this isn't three seconds anymore. This is a much longer video. So what's happening is that at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that the iPhone is continuously playing back live photo after live photo. And I took a lot of photos over a relatively short period of time and all of them were within three seconds from each other. And whenever you do that, whenever you capture a lot of live photos one after another, you can literally play back the entire video as if I had just captured a 10, 15 second video. It's kind of crazy, but it's really cool. Even though I wasn't intentionally capturing a video here, I have a really nice clip where my daughter is playing on this beach. Now, if for any reason you don't get sound while you're watching your live photos, make sure that the sound of the iPhone is turned on using this ringer switch on the side of the iPhone. So if you're seeing red, that means sound is off. If you're not seeing red, that means sound is enabled. And that way you can play back your live photos, both with video and with audio. But now let's take a look at the editing options of your live photos. There's some pretty unique things you can only do with a live photo and I'm about to show those to you right now. For example, if you look at this live photo, you'll notice that it's not quite ideal. You'll see that in the still image, my daughter is looking down and her face is in the shadow. So it's not quite what I need. But if we play back the video, you'll see that at the very end, my daughter turned her head and she looked up. And I think those last moments of the video could actually be where the real photo opportunity was. But it looks like I missed it, at least in this shot, because she's looking down and her face is in the shadow. So what can I do? Well, let me show you. I'm gonna tap edit at the top right hand corner of the screen. And from here on the right hand side, I'm going to tap on the icon that looks like live photos. So this is where I have all the editing options that are specifically associated with the live photo. So at the top, you'll see the word live in yellow. That means I have a live photo here. If I tap my finger there, I can just disable the video part of the live photo. So if you have a nice still frame, if you don't need the rest of the live photo, or if you want to get rid of it before sending it over to someone, this is how you can do it. But for now, I'm going to tap on live again. And now I've brought that live photo back. At the top left, you have the same option for audio. So if I tap there once, you'll see audio is turned off and now that live photo comes without sound. Again, I don't need that, so I'm gonna tap this again, and now audio is on once again. At the bottom, we have controls for the video that's associated with the live photo, and there are two things I can do. One thing is to trim the video, so if for any reason I wanted to make this video shorter, I can just cut out the start or the end of it like this, and you'll see that only the part that's in yellow is the part that will be used in the video that's associated with live photo. Again, that's not what I need here, so I'll just use the full length video, which is the original we started with. But the one thing I do want to change here is the keyframe. So in the center of the screen, at the bottom, you'll see this white rectangle that essentially selects the still frame that's gonna be the photo itself. And I can actually move that around. You'll see that as I move that rectangle around, I can actually change 
the still image that is the center of the live photo. So I'm gonna be careful with this and I wanna pick the exact right moment. And it looks like the closer I am to the end here, the better it gets. You'll see that my daughter even starts smiling at the end. So pretty much the last frame of this live photo is the frame that I need. So once I've selected that last frame, I'm gonna choose make key photo. So now I no longer have that old still image as a part of this live photo. Instead, I'm now using this last frame of the video that came as live photo as my still image. So I'm gonna press on done at the top right hand corner and now you can see that I still have the same live photo, but the still image is the exact frame I needed. Now, this is an absolutely wonderful technique and oftentimes you can save a shot that didn't quite work out just because you have that live photo available, but it does come with a quality loss. So for social media use, it's not gonna be a problem, or if you need to email the photo to someone or just show it to a friend on the screen of the iPhone, this quality is perfectly fine. However, that still image that we now have, it comes out of that video file, and the video file cannot be as high resolution. It cannot have as much information as the original still image. And because of that, if I change the keyframe of a live photo, I can save a bad photo and get a much better composition, but I am gonna get some quality loss. So if you want the highest quality shots possible, for example, if you're gonna print your work, then you really need to capture that still image at the exact right moment. Now, luckily for us, the next photo I captured is exactly that. So I got the right shot that I wanted. This is an original still image. And because I have not taken this frame out of the video that comes with live photos, I have much better quality here. And finally, there are just a couple other options I'd like to show you. But for these, I wanna capture another live photo, this time without any people in the frame. So I'm gonna take a couple of steps towards the beach and I'll frame up a shot where we have those little waves breaking against the shore of the sea. Okay, so I'm at my 2x view now and I wanna get closer so I can eliminate everything from the frame and just keep those waves. I'm looking for a really simple shot here. So I'm gonna make sure I frame out all these people at the top, but now I got a bit of a problem. You'll see my head is the highest point and the sun is right behind me. And because of that, there's just a big shadow of my head in the middle of my frame. So I need to really carefully get my head lower and frame up the shot and then I need to wait for the right wave to come. And as those waves keep coming, I'll press the shutter. I'll do it again just to be sure. And I think I got the shot that we needed. Let me show you what I can do with the shot. Okay, here's one of the live photos I just captured. And if I play it back, you'll see those waves crashing against the shoreline. Now, Here's where it gets interesting. Let me show you what happens as I swipe my finger up across the screen. So I'm swiping from the bottom to the top. You'll see this effect section come up and by default, a live effect or a live photo is selected. But let me show you what happens if I select loop. So the video loads, you'll see that now I have this never ending video where those waves just keep crashing and crashing and crashing against the shoreline. In fact, it's the same wave and using the loop, essentially the iPhone has computed that if it cuts the video correctly, it can create a never ending loop where the same wave just keeps crashing and crashing and crashing against the shoreline. So that's what we have here using the loop effect. This tends to work better with some kind of regular motion, such as waves on the beach. And it usually doesn't work so well if you're taking photos of a person. But now, I'm gonna do this again. So I'm gonna swipe up across the live photo again. And you'll see that the next effect we have here is bounce. So let's quickly check that out. And bounce is kind of similar, except here, the waves are going back and forth, back and forth. So we have the same wave crashing against the beach and retreating back. It doesn't look quite natural, but it's an interesting effect nevertheless. And for some live photos, bounce actually looks much better than low. So it's worth experimenting with both. And finally, if I do this again, 
So I'm gonna swipe up again. The last effect I have here is long exposure. And if I select that, you'll see that I essentially got a blurry image where I don't really see the waves. Now, long exposure doesn't work so well for this specific photo, but in a separate video, I'm going to show you how you can use this effect to capture some truly extraordinary photos with your iPhone. But right now, let's finish up with live photos. I think it's a really great iPhone camera technique, and I personally just have live photos on all the time. Every time I open the camera app, to me, it defaults to my live photos on, and that way, whenever I take a shot, I'm always recording that video. I don't know if I'm gonna need that video later or not, but oftentimes when there's some kind of movement in the frame, or especially if I'm capturing photos in family setting with other people, or if I'm doing portrait photography, I'm getting those really beautiful, really unique videos that capture more information than a still frame would capture. And thanks to these live photos, I can now look back at my memories with a lot more detail, with some sound, with some motion. I can tell you some really great moments and a lot of laughter can result from these live photo videos. So I think live photos is a great feature, it's something I use all the time, and I recommend that you do the same so that you can capture your memories in the best way possible.